Buddy Ebsen and I have nothing but the utmost respect. I mean, you are one of the great performers in America's 20th yeah. century. Yeah. And as a little kid, I know most, well, your credits go forever. But the first time I saw you as a child, you were the sidekick to Davy Crockett, to yeah. Fess Parker. Do you remember when Walt Disney put on uh, the Davy Crockett? Yeah. That, and then, of course, Barnaby Jones. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. When we were just talking to Max, Max was talking about how that one character that he played in effect kept him locked up and he had trouble getting in other roles. You've played it all. How do you account for the fact that you could play all these different roles of different kinds of characters? Well, I had to, you see. Uh, I had six children and they all had expensive tastes. <laughs> <laughs> You were the original Tin Man. True. And, ladies and gentlemen, you don't come to this talk show and not learn something you didn't know before, but you want to tell the people why you didn't stay being the Tin Man? <clears throat> well, I'll have to get up to do it, because I'll have to demonstrate. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Funny Epson. Well, originally, I was not supposed to be the Tin Man. I was supposed to be the Scarecrow. And then a wonderful dancer named Ray Bolger came on the lot. Uh -huh. And he had been doing a Scarecrow dance in vaudeville for years, so he was a natural for the part, so they switched and made me the Tin Man. <clears throat> well, the first problem was the wardrobe. The, make, the wardrobe department had never made a tin suit before. So on the theory that tin means tin, they made me one out of stovepipe. <laughs> now just between you and me, there's very little stretch in stovepipe. <laughs> Especially in the uh, southern regions of the suit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there I was in the suit for the first time with the MGM brass sitting out front uh, to be shown and the director said to me walk so I walked uh -huh. I sounded like a junk wagon coming out a bumpy road <laughs> and he said dance so I did a little dance <laughs> And he said, do a big step. So I did a hitch kick. <laughs> and almost gave myself an ad-lib sex chain. <laughs> so I yelled in pain, explained to the director. He said, get him out of there. The park doesn't call for a soprano. <laughs> anyway, the next problem was the makeup. They got me in the studio at 8 o'clock in the morning. They glued a rubber cap over my hair, glued on a rubber nose, a rubber chin, covered the whole thing with clown white, and then took a giant step in the wrong direction. They powdered me with aluminum dust. Very finely ground aluminum dust. Well, after you work on the picture for 10 days, they powdered you maybe a dozen or two dozen times a day. Stuff gets in the air, you're going to breathe some of it. I breathed enough to coat my lungs with it. They, I collapsed, they took me to the hospital. I spent six weeks in the Good Samaritan Hospital under an oxygen tent. And that is the uh, story of my short visit to the land of Oz. <laughs> We'll be back with more wonderful stories about the Beverly Hillbillies when we return.